Hey girl, hi! It's your neighborhood white girl here, giving you more life lessons and edumacation. Mm, I didn't even say that right. It's fine. Um, okay, so today let's talk about some creepy ass shit. A lot of people think that poetry is like really hard to understand and whatever. So we're gonna really delve into a poem and then you'll be able to like reference it and impress all of the sexy scholar suitors and whoever else. Um, okay, so our poem today is Daddy by Sylvia Plath. So let's talk about Sylvia Plath for a minute. So she was born in 1932 in Boston and her dad was a professor at Boston University. Um, she had a mom too and actually her mom was like her dad's student or something before they got married and they met there and got married. It's like this one high school teacher I had. We always thought he was kind of creepy towards my best friend, which is like kind of weird. I don't know. But then we found out that he had actually married one of his students. Not my friend. This was like before. And I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Glad it was my best friend. Anyway, or maybe, I don't know. He's a nice guy. I don't try not to judge. I just thought it was weird. But anyway. Anyway, she had parents. Um, Plath is what I'm talking about. My friend did too, but we're talking about Plath. Yeah. Okay, so her dad died when she was eight, which made it really hard for her. You know, because her dad was like this big authoritarian figure, almost like a kind of tyrant in the house, whatever. Um, made made it really hard for her when she died. Or he died. Sorry, it made it hard for Plath when her dad died. Yeah. So, Plath was hella depressed and uh, suicidal, whatever, but she was still super smart and she still worked really hard. She graduated from Smith College with honors. It was really good for her, you know. She persevered, got through a lot. She was very smart. She wrote a lot. Um, and a lot of her work, uh, poems, prose, whatever, uh, mainly, mainly poems, and her, a lot of her work uh, it was really depressing and, and dark because she was really depressing and dark, and I guess you write what you know. That brings us to our poem, Daddy. And I have it here, and I was thinking about reading it to you, but, um, I mean, like, you can look it up online yourself and read it. So, you looked it up, you looked it up, read, 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 read. Okay, cool. So, you know it. Great. Um, so that's some heavy shit. Yeah. Um, so it seems pretty obvious, just, you know, in the first time reading this poem, that it's about Plath's father in some ways. Um, and Plath herself has said that the poem is supposed to be from a girl with a major electra complex, um, who is mourning the loss of her German father while also acknowledging that her mother may have been a Jew. So therefore the daughter is part Jewish as well. Um, so here it is important to note that Plath um, wrote this poem less than 20 years after World War II. This was written in 1962. And she was born before World War II began. So she was a young, like, preteen when um, the war was going on and all that horrific shit was going down. So obviously um, that played a big element in her writing, even though she was in America during that time. She later traveled. Um, but at this time, she was young, and she was in America, but that still uh, obviously had a big effect on her. Yeah, if we continue with this idea that it's kind of about plus, like an autobiographical poem, her poem can be an elegy, which seems like eulogy, and it looks like elegy, but it's actually elegy. Um, and that's like a serious poem for dead people. Uh, yeah, and so thinking that it's an elegy comes from this guy, Jahan Ramazani. And he wrote this whole, like, paper on it, whatever, um, that Plath, made a major contribution to the development of the modern elegy, even though they have more often been read as examples of confessional, extremist, lyric, American, or domestic poetry than as poems of mourning. 
So basically, most people think that Plath is just too crazy to have written these elegies. Um, but Ramazani, he admits they're not really traditional elegies. Um, she defied the typical uh, gender role of passivity, and she she was really nice uh, in her poems. <laughs> I mean, if this is an elegy, in her dad's like death poem, she called him a brute and a bastard and a, I mean, a fucking Nazi, basically. Uh, that's not really what I want to be called when I die. Whatever. Um, mm, note to self, write my own elegy in advance. And do it. Um, just make sure nobody calls me a brute, bastard, and a Nazi in mine. Um, I'm not really concerned that it'll happen. Okay, so, not very nice. But, Ramazani is cool with her meanness and defying the gender role of passivity because he says that Plath was this revolutionary feminist writer. She allowed women to express their anger and mourning outside of the stereotypical sexist expectations that you're just gonna cry and like miss your dad and whatever. Not that she didn't do that, just that she's expressing it um, in a different way. Ramazani even uses a quote from Plath in which she says of her father, I adored and despised him, and I probably wished many times that he were dead. When he obliged me and died, I imagined that I had killed him. So this explains uh, some of the, the second stanza of the poem where the first line is, Daddy, I have had to kill you. So she imagines that because she wished him dead, he actually did die because of her wishes. Ramazani explains that this only furthers the idea that her poems are elegies, so not only does that explain that it's autobiographical, but also this is an elegy because self-destructing mourning has long played a role in the elegy. So I guess traditionally in these poems, people will, will take responsibility for the death, if I'd only done this, or take responsibility for some mishap in the deceased life or whatever. So this is really common. So this connects it more to those traditional elegies. So it is one. Um, and then Ramazani says that her poems are like Abvi elegies because Plath admitted to reading some of Freud's work on mourning and like totally agreed with it. Like at first I don't really know how that makes sense, but anyway, I want to keep going. So hang with me. Um, she decided her reasons for suicide were a transferred murderous impulse that came from like Freud I'm guessing um which explains her discussion of suicide attempts within daddy so she talks about I tried to you know join you at 20 I tried to die and get back 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 to you she connects that to Freud's mourning and mourning is what an allergy is for M O U. RN, not morning like when we have brunch, but morning, um, like lost. So it's on morning, and that's what an allergy is for. So obviously, it's an allergy. Wrong. Because another scholar wrote, well, it's not necessarily wrong, it's just like it's not obvious. Because another scholar wrote about how the whole poem was about Plath killing herself at least a part of herself. Um, so Craig Svonken, Svonken, is that a fun word, uh, name, whatever, wrote that Plath used daddy to discuss her suiciding her white male identified alter ego. So he sees the same transformational suicide in other writers works such as Robert Lowell's. So Svonken references the work of Freud, again, um, on negation. So basically what this like theory of Freud says is that it is easier for people to acknowledge a repressed idea if they are negating it, such as killing it. So, I mean, I guess this theory makes sense. Who am I to argue with Freud? <laughs> um, uh, but I think that it really applies to our friend Sylvia because... Um, Svonken says that Plath's blurring of the I and the other, of the ick and the do, 
as she writes in the poem, are poetic variations on Freud's negation and displacement. So basically, she's acknowledging that she has this alter ego when she's killing it. So it's not really mentioned in other works just as like, oh, my like white male alter ego, whatever, is here. No, she only brings... She only brings um, her alter ego up in killing him. So saying, like, yes, I've had this, but I've, like, overcome it. Um, so that plays into Freud's theory. That, that makes sense. Um, I'm just not totally sure that I agree with it. So I think if we put these two theories together, it will all make more sense. So maybe Daddy is an elegy for her father. But since we know that Mr. Plath wasn't a torturous Nazi brute with the love of the rack and screw, the torture part. Um, okay, I mean, I guess I don't know that, but it wasn't referenced in her biographies, and I feel like that would be an important detail, uh, personally. So I'm going to go with that's not really true. Um, so maybe Plath sees some of the worst in herself coming from this idea she has of her father at a young age. So while it is in mourning of her father, she also has this self-identified part that more I closely identifies with this brutish Nazi that she references in the poem. Um, so in acknowledging her father's death and the conflicting feelings with his passing, she can also release a hidden alter ego tied to the pain and confusion surrounding her father. And I think that this can explain her description of herself as a Jew because it's not that her um, she thinks her father hates her. It's the way that he made her make her hate herself. Does that make sense? So it's mourning both her father physically passing, but also she is ridding herself of kind of an alter ego that was made in the confusion of her father's passing. This poem was written many years after her father had died. So it is um, a reflection back. It's not right after. Um, so she could have like realized that she had this self-hatred because of the way she viewed her father when she was young, and then she's killing it and recognizing it, so it ties into both theories. Um, both Plath and her father can occupy the role of daddy in the poem, while a resentful, saddened, hurt, younger Plath plays the narrator to release her hateful self and her father into death. Mm hmm? Hmm? Maybe? Maybe not? Maybe? It's kind of combining the two theories, I think, to give each one some credit. Because I'm not saying that there's one right answer. Plath is obviously a very complex and emotional human and writer. So I think that she could incorporate all of these things, not just into this almost vindictive elegy, but in an elegy that honors her father, but also acknowledges the way that she has felt about herself because of her father. Mm -hmm. All right, what do I know? I'm just your neighborhood white girl, so comment below and keep watching to learn and muse.